Hello, welcome to third grade. My name is Miss Goebel and I am going to be your ELA teacher. You have three teachers this year, Miss McElvain for math, Miss Schultz for science and social studies, and me, Miss Goebel for ELA. This slide just tells you a little bit about me. Here's my phone number and my email. If you need to pause and write that down, you can but since I'm here, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I went to Ohio University, and this is in Athens, Ohio. Ohio University is special to me because it's where I went to college, and it's also in my hometown, which is also Athens, Ohio. Here's me and my parents on my day of graduation. This is me and my sister, Jessica. She was not there on the day of my graduation, but I wanted to show you my cat, Luna. And this is my fiance, Michael. We're getting married next year. Today, I'm going to walk you through some basics of how we will behave when we are in a live session of learning. So just a few basics. Your camera will be on and your mic will be muted. This is so that we can hear whoever is speaking at the time. If everyone's mic was on, we wouldn't be able to hear anything. So every day when you log in, you'll make sure your camera is on so we can see your face, but your mic is off. You want to turn off any other distractions that way you can focus on the lesson you know, i wouldn't be able to teach very well if i had my phone here and i wasn't paying attention to you i was checking my notifications so we ask that anything else that might distract you be put down out of the way and you focus just on the lesson and then finally be ready to learn and have fun i mentioned that you'll need to mute your microphone you can do this by clicking on the microphone in the bottom center of your screen. So it'll look something like this. There'll be a mic, an end button, and a video button. You wanna to toggle so that the butt mic is red. It'll look like this. That means it's off. I mentioned turning off your distractions. A couple other ways you can help yourself focus is to be in a quiet room. This is probably a room away from any other siblings who are in the house if they are also learning, or at least on another side of the room if possible. You wanna set your computer on a flat, sturdy surface. You can tell that my computer is on a flat surface right now because my camera isn't moving. But if I were to set it on an unsteady surface, I get all wobbly and then it's hard to see. So make sure that your computer is flat. And then, as I said, make sure you don't have any other distractions with you. No phones, television, no other tabs open or other distractions. This will help you focus on the day's lesson. And you want to be just like this little guy, focused, ready to go. Looking at this picture, what do you think? Is he ready for class? Think to yourself for a second. I'm going to say no. He's distracted. He has another phone in front of him. He's not even looking at the screen. So this would not be the way we want to show up for class. What about this scholar? Thumbs up, thumbs down. He's ready. He is sitting in a sturdy chair. The laptop is on a flat surface and you can tell there's nothing else distracting him. He's focused on the screen. this scholar or these two scholars? He'd say no. It looks like their computer is not on a flat surface. They shouldn't be in the same room because they might distract each other. And it looks like he's playing games on a phone or maybe a handheld game system. So he's not really focused on the lesson. Make sure that you are separated from one another in your house. Your computer is on a flat surface and you are good to go. This is our last one. Ready or not ready? Ready. She's in a sturdy chair. The computer is on a flat surface and she is focused just on the screen. When you log on to a live lesson, you'll notice that there is a chat box. This is a tool that's mostly just going to be used when a teacher asks you to use it. So we might ask you to type a quick answer in the chat box. We might ask you to respond yes or no but you are not going to just start chatting with other people in the lesson using the chat box. 
that's something that would distract us from learning. It pops up on other people's screens and that makes it hard for them to focus too. So you won't need to use the chat box unless I or another teacher asks you to. During our live lessons, we'll stop to take breaks every hour. So you'll have 10 minutes every single hour to get up, stretch your legs, go to the bathroom. Some things you need to know. Make sure when you leave, you mute your mic. You can mute your screen too if you would like if you're going to walk away so you could turn off your video. But when you come back, we just ask that you turn it back on. You would never take your computer with you, especially not if you're going to the bathroom. Leave your computer in your work area and that way you are ready to go when you come back. A couple things about going to the bathroom. We are going to ask that you wait for those breaks. Our lessons are only 50 minutes long, so that's half the time that we have during the regular school day. And you'll have 10 minutes every single hour to go. If you go during the lesson, you're going to miss something, but just know the break is coming up. So only use the restroom during the lesson if it's an absolute emergency. And again, like I said, just make sure to leave your computer in your workspace with your mic off and your video off. But when you come back, your teachers will have a movement activity for you. We know it's hard to sit at your computer all day, so we'll have something for you to do to stretch out, move your legs a little bit, and then get ready for your next lesson. For today's ELA lesson, we're gonna keep talking about some norms for Google Classroom and some rules that we might need to know to make us successful this year. You don't need any materials with you, and by the end of today's lesson, you will turn in the assignment labeled Tuesday, September 8th, ELA. It'll have these same emojis that you see up here on my slide. The orange heart means Tuesday and the stack of books means ELA. So in our Google Meet session, when you attend a live lesson, you'll notice there's an option to send some reactions. It may not be on all of your computers, but it is on some. It's okay if it's not there because it's actually something that it's just going to be used if the teacher asks. So it's not something that we're going to just send in the chat. Emojis are a teacher directed tool, so you shouldn't be using them without cause, celebrating another scholar's achievement, or with direction if a teacher asks you to give a thumbs up or thumbs down. And most times we'll probably just ask you to do that with your own thumb, just to make things easier. So we won't use this very much. If we do use it, it would be to celebrate in response to a scholar who just participated, but as I'm showing you, you can also do it with just your hands. And again, the thumbs up, thumbs down, we can also do with our own body, so we might not even need the reactions. Restroom, we just talked about this, but we're gonna have three breaks in our blocks of live lessons. So every single day at 9.20, 10.20, and 11.20, you'll have time to go to the restroom. That's a lot more than when we're in the regular school day, and that's one of the great freedoms of being at home. So we will have three restroom breaks in our day. Something we do need to talk about is how we are safe online. Be aware of your surroundings. We are on an internet platform, so everything that we say is being broadcast through Google Meets, just to our class, but it's still an environment that if you don't wanna share it, you need to be away from maybe conversations that are happening in the background. If there's nothing that you want people to see, make sure it's just not right behind you. As you notice in my background, you can just see my bulletin board, my poster, and this is an environment that I have carefully selected because it is my school environment. Make sure you make a good choice about where you want to work as well. Be seated in a room by yourself with the door open. This is just in case your parents want to come in for the lesson, they want to see what you're doing. That door open helps make sure that you are safe online. Don't walk around with your computer. This goes back to only showing what you want to show and only showing what your parents want to show. So you don't wanna walk around and capture conversations that weren't meant for everybody. And then never bring your computer with you to the bathroom. That's so important, we said it twice. If you have to use the restroom, you just leave your computer in your workspace, turn off the mic and the video and come back when you're ready. You are probably all on your school computers right now, your Chromebook. You need to join class on your Chromebook. It is a requirement that you use your school computer. 
we can help you so much better when you're on your school computer. It allows us to help push you to tabs that you need open. It allows us to help see what you're seeing on your screen so we know if you're having a problem. And it just helps us help you. You would only go to websites that we've directed you to. And school computers are just that. They're for school. They're not for anything else. So at the end of the day, you close it up and you're not using it for personal reasons, just for school. Setting up your space, alone, open door, quiet as possible. That way when we, you speak, we hear you. Computer on a flat surface and you're sitting in a chair, not on your bed. This helps because then you are sitting upright, you're more able to focus and we can hear you. If you're lounging back on your bed or you get further and further away from the screen, it's hard to hear. Another thing that you got from the school was a U Prep materials bag. So you have a bunch of school supplies that were sent home with you. Everything that you need for your school should be found in this bag. You have a notebook, whiteboard, marker, pencils, erasers, sharpeners, some headphones. Anything that you would need is found in that bag. Every teacher will list the materials you need from that bag on their first slide. Just like I did today, I said you didn't need anything, but sometimes you might need a pencil and a notebook. Everything else can stay in the bag so it's ready for your next lesson. So since you didn't need anything today, everything should still be in that bag. ELA materials that we'll most likely use, the notebook. So you probably saw a composition notebook. It's what we'll take some notes in. We might outline a paragraph, write an essay in it, and it's for school. You'll need your pencils, erasers, maybe your sharpener, and sometimes your skills packet. The notebook is going to be used just for ELA and social studies, and it's only to be used for schoolwork. If we're using it for something else, you might not have paper when you need it. A great way to keep track of your place is to mark your page with a post-it or a bookmark. You might end up mixing days or subjects, and that's okay. But we don't want to just pick a random place in the notebook or we'll run out of paper too soon. And you won't be able to find what you've written down. So if you have just a scrap piece of paper that you can use as a bookmark or a post-it, that's a great way to keep you ready for your next lesson. Your skills packet also went home. It looks just like this. We're going to use this a few times to uh, practice our cursive to warm up for class. We might not do it every day, but sometimes we will. It's also full of some extra practice pages for all of our subjects. You can use this when you finish early to practice after school. Maybe you want to work with your parents or with a tutor and just to warm up for our day. It's really an extra resource for you. One tool that we will use very frequently is Google Docs. We're going to use this to take notes, answer questions and submit assignments. Today, we're going to practice an assignment about my favorite animal, sharks. To find your assignment today, you'll need to go to your Clever portal. Click on Google Classroom, and then once you're in Google Classroom, you're going to navigate to the Classwork tab and scroll down until you see week one, September 8th through 11th. Every week there'll be a new header, but we're just in our first week, so that's where your assignment is going to be. It will be labeled Tuesday, September 8th, ELA. And it looks like this. I'll show you how to get there. So now we're on our Clever page. You might see this McIlvain's teacher page, some other resources, Zern, ReadWorks, Typing Club, uh, Google Hangouts, which is where Google Meets. But the resource you need is Google Classroom. Why don't we go ahead and I'll just put a heart on that right now. And then when we refresh the page, it should show up right up here in our favorite resources. Now we're going to click into our Google Classroom. When you log on to Google Classroom, you might see a couple choices here. If your teacher started a classroom last year, you'll still be a part of that. However, you need to select the Google Classroom here. You see my picture, Ms. Goble, and you'll also see Ms. McElwain and Ms. Schultz waving in our header. It's our third grade class, so let's click on that. In our class, you can now see the stream. So this is where all of your teachers will post our announcements for the day. It'll include our assignments, our videos if you missed the lesson, and this is where we'll post once a day. 
every single teacher. But where you want to go to find the assignment that we're talking about right now is under classwork. You should see a couple different topics here, resources and week one. Week one is where we're going to go to find our assignment. The resources include things like your daily schedule, your checklist, your small group assignments. That's really important that you know when you have a small group. But to find your assignment for this lesson, you're going to scroll down to week one and click on Tuesday, September 8th, ELA. An easy way to distinguish these assignments is to look for the little stack of books. If it has that, that means it's an ELA or a reading assignment, and it's from me. If it has a microscope, that means it's from Mrs. Schultz because it's a science or social studies assignment. And if you see numbers next to an assignment, that means it's math and from Ms. McElveen. You want the ELA assignment. When you click on it, you'll see the instructions for your YouTube video access, what you need to do, and then your assignment will be linked here. So let's go ahead and click into it. When the document opens up, you should see your name before the assignment. This tells you that it's your copy. Then what you want to do is hit open with Google Docs right here. And now you have your own copy in your Google Drive. This is for you to edit and will be what you follow along with during the lesson. If you've been at UPrep before, you'll notice this looks pretty similar to a daily packet. I'm going to try to stick to this format during ELA class. That way it's something familiar and we can all keep up with the lesson. This document is meant to help guide you through our daily videos. So what you want to do is have the YouTube video open and your Google document. In order to see both at the same time, we need to split our screen. So I'm going to hover my mouse over the tab that says Tuesday, September 8th, ELA. That's our document. I'm going to click on it and pull. And then you'll notice it minimizes. What I want to do is take this tab and push it to the right side of the screen until that outline appears. And it's going to click into place, just like that. Then you want to select which tab you see on the other side. You should just have the YouTube video open. And there you go. You'll have your YouTube on the left and your document on the right. Now, I don't have a video up just yet because I'm filming it right now. But when it's up, you'll be able to hit play and watch along as we do the video um, or as you do the lesson. Now that you know where to find your work for today, let's get started. In your document, you'll see our objective is that you can edit a Google Doc and submit your work on Google Classroom. We're going to do it do now. Vocab. We'll read aloud and then do a reading reflection. This is a very similar setup to what our class will look like every day. Underneath your do now, you'll notice there is a yellow box. This is where you want to type your answer to the question. When you type in the yellow box, that makes sure nothing else on the document moves. So the question asks you, we are about to read about sharks and remoras. What do you already know about either of these sea creatures? Do your best to write at least one thing you know. We always want to restate the question and write in complete sentences. So you would say, I already know, and then finish your sentence. You'll notice at the bottom of the page here, it says pausing point, and there's a stop sign. Anytime you see that in your document, that means you need to stop scrolling and wait until you have a teacher direction for the next step. Go ahead and pause, and when you are ready, come back, and we'll move on from the do now. Now that you've finished your do now, we can scroll past that pausing point, and you'll see a vocabulary section. Just like with the do now, there's a yellow text box for you to write in. So, you are going to write the words that I tell you in this yellow box. We'll do this in ELA every day, so it's good practice. Our first word today is a close relationship between two species in which at least one species benefits. This is called a symbiotic relationship. And you're just gonna type that in your box. Symbiotic relationship. Next 
next word. An animal that is hunted and killed by another for food. This is called prey. P-R-E-Y. Prey. And then our last word is an organism that lives on or in a host organism and gets its food from or at the expense of its host. This is a parasite. You're going to type that in this box. Go ahead and make sure that your vocabulary page looks just like mine. You'll see there is another pausing point at this, at the bottom of this page, but once you are done, you can keep scrolling. Symbiotic relationship, prey, and parasite. And now, let's read. The shark and the remora fish, a unique relationship. Relationships form all over the, the animal kingdom. Sometimes these relationships grow between the most unlikely of pairs. In the animal world, if the relationship benefits both species, it's known as a symbiotic relationship. One example of symbiosis is the relationship between sharks and remora fish. The remora is a small fish that usually measures between one and three feet long. Their front dorsal fins evolved over time into an organ that sits like a suction cup on the top of their heads. This organ allows the remora to attach to a passing shark, usually on the shark's belly. Sometimes they even attach to whales, manta rays, and the occasional diver. The shark and remora relationship benefits both species. Remoras eat scraps of prey dropped by the shark. They also feed off of parasites on the shark's skin and in its mouth. This makes the shark, pa the shark happy because the parasites would otherwise irritate the shark. The remora receives more than just a convenient food source. The shark protects them from predators and gives them free transportation throughout the oceans. The host shark is kept clean of irritating parasites that could adversely affect its health. That means negatively. Studies show that many shark species seem to understand the benefits a remora has on its life and well-being. Sharks' behavior changes in the presence of remoras. They have been observed slowing down, even risking their own survival to allow remoras to attach themselves. Now you can scroll down to page six of your Google Doc, where it says reading reflection. The first question is, how does the shark benefit from the remora? So what does the shark get out of this relationship with the remora? What is one positive thing they receive because of this relationship? You could start your sentence off by saying, the shark benefits because, and then you might wanna scroll back to find your text evidence. I see here that it says the shark and remora relationship benefits both species. So if I read on, I would expect to find a reason that it benefits the shark and a reason it benefits the remora. I see here that the remoras feed off of parasites on the shark's skin, and this makes the shark happy because the parasites would otherwise irritate the shark. So. On page six, you're gonna write, this benefits the shark because the remora eats parasites that would otherwise irritate their skin. You can take a moment and pause your video to finish that. I'm gonna go on to question two. Your second question asks you, how does the remora benefit from the shark? So this is a, the one to three foot long fish that sticks onto the shark. What does it receive out of this relationship? Again, we want to start our sentence off. The remora benefits because, and then go back and find your text evidence. So if I scroll back in the document, I see the sharks protect the remoras from predators and give them free transportation throughout the ocean. So you could say the remora benefits because the shark protects them and helps them get around. When you are done with these two questions, I should see a complete sentence on each. Then you're gonna go and submit it, and I'll show you how to do that. 
when you're done with your lesson, what you need to do is go back to the Classroom tab. You're going to click back into our Google Classroom, and you should see the assignment again. When you click into View Assignment, this might pop up for you to say, Talk with your teacher. So if you have any comments about the lesson, you can put them there and hit Send. I will see those. But what you need to do is make sure that you mark this part right here where it says turn in. Your Google document will not turn in automatically. You have to go back in and turn it in. So even though it looks finished here, if it does not say turn in here, then I won't know that you're done. So I would just click turn in. And then you'll see it here marked as turned in, and I'll know too. And that's it for today. You know you're done when you've watched the video all the way through, you've completed your Google document, and all the yellow spots have words, a sentence, something in them, and three, you've hit turn in on Google Classroom. That tells me you've completed the first two steps, and I am good to have a look at it. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. My number is right here on the screen over there. <laughs> and have a great rest of your day.